way out to Blue Heron Farm to see our friends Lisa and Christian Seeger. They're goat farmers. What I'm gonna try today is their wonderful feta. They don't, uh, they don't brine it. They leave it fresh and it's beautiful and soft and it's, it's such a luscious flavor. There's love in the cheese that they make that comes from the goat's milk. I mean, you can taste the difference between that and something packaged that you pick up off the shelf of the grocery store. No, we don't want to go out here. Oh. Don't make me come get you. Who's this one? That's Athena. Athena, Athena's a lover. So they know their names, <laughs> but they're like cats. They don't necessarily care that you're calling right. them, right? But they do know. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> it's a farming life. It's a very hard life. I mean, they, they have to get up at this time in the morning and they have to milk them at this time of day and they have to do it every day and there's no days off. We don't get up till seven. The That's thing is, right. if you have to milk twice a You're day, not every real day. farmers. Yeah, no, we're not. People always say that, oh, you get up so early. I'm like, oh, no, 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 we're not that kind of farmer. How did you fall into goat world? So, this was a joke that got out of hand. <laughs> Basically, Christian, so I never ever wanted to live in the country. I don't know if you can tell by looking at me, I'm kind of city people. And then his joke got weirdly more specific. It was like, oh, we're gonna live in the country and have goats. And I was like, well, that's random. He just kind of wouldn't let it go. So I bought a leisure learning class. We went out there and the funny thing is, Christian saw it. And the first thing he noticed is like, everything is filthy and falling apart. And like, there's chickens crapping on this guy's craftsman tools. And Christian, as we left was like, oh, you're, we're, not, we're not gonna do this. This is disgusting. I couldn't have a chicken crapping on my craftsman tools. And as we're leaving, I was just like. Yeah. Goes, goes, goes. <laughs> I was a roadie for 10 years. So that teaches you everything about just how to take, you know, a pile of crap and turn it into a rock concert that people will pay for. And all those skills worked out here. If you have to pay an electrician, a plumber, a fence maker, a, a field mower, a veterinarian, we'd be looking at not able to do it. The margins are just so thin. Lisa has an advertising background and a good sense of humor and a really good understanding of media creation. So she does so much of the marketing and so much of the branding just naturally and then I do the nuts and the bolts. She does the funny pants and the muck coffee nuts. Right, <laughs> right. That's the key. Yeah, Joel Salton never tells you about the funny pants. Are they real goats or are they stunt goats? Well, these are our goats. They're the same ones on your mug. You can have the whole ensemble. Thank you. I wore them yesterday. If you want to do what we're doing, which is having relationships with chefs like you and market customers like we have and being able to do pop-ups, you got to stay at 25. Like we would have to go from artisan production, the two of us doing everything, to mass production, yeah, having some employees. Have employees which, and so yeah. on 30 goats, you can do artisan. On 35, you can't, you're in trouble. And so um, on 45, you can't afford anyone. So you gotta make the jump from 25 to 125. Right. And that's more land, that's bigger trucks, bigger refrigeration. Cause once you jump to 125, there's no reason to stop there. <laughs> it gets yeah, better when you there, go you to 1,250. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, from yeah. there to 2,500. And like this is how America got into this whole problem is that we decided that the bigger and faster you can do something, the better it is. Normally we make a, a 20 gallon batch of feta. This is gonna be super tiny because it's fall and this is how much milk I had today. Set the timer for another hour and then we take a nap. Yeah? Excellent. <laughs> they foster a lot of dogs, a lot of cute puppies. So they're always peddling dogs on the interwebs. <laughs> Basically, yes, a lot of dog peddling. Oh, did you hear the yawn? She has puppy breath. Did you smell her puppy breath? No. Oh. <laughs> If only you could bottle puppy oh, breath. He hates it. Look at that face. <laughs> so gross. <laughs> so how did you to me? Match.com. It was 15 was years ago. So early on Match.com that I told her she had to make up a story for a friend. <laughs> we were like lying about everything. Like normal people don't get on that. Yeah. He was literally searching for someone within five miles, five miles of his house. <laughs> He, he couldn't be bothered. He couldn't be bothered to date a girl that lived outside the loop. But now it's easier. There's a dating site called FarmersOnly.com, so you can just go get yourself. Really the commercials are amazing. Yeah. <laughs>
I don't know, buddy. A lot of us know the woes of the meat industry and, and farming and where our food comes from, and they, they take that very seriously. They are very uh, loving and compassionate um, towards these animals. If you want to take care and you want to be good to the earth and you want to be good to the animals and you want to be good to the people, you have to stay small. We're a country of one percenters. We have one percent that hold all the wealth. Guess who they're not? The farmers. And we have one percent growing all the food. And we need to get to reasonable numbers on both of those things. Right. We need more people farming because the fewer people farming, the more shortcuts there are, the more horrifying practices there are. Chickens and pigs are especially bad. They're housed so tightly, um, which leads to disease, which leads to them feeding them antibiotics, which leads to antibiotic yeah. re resistance for people. So now we've right. already harmed the entire globe because our antibiotics don't yeah. work anymore. You know, I was a vegetarian when we started this and I'm not anymore. And part of my thing in being able to eat meat again was I had to go beginning to end. So we started with a turkey. You became and a frienditarian? I'm a frienditarian. I will eat my own friends like that turkey. We gotta go. Not us, yeah, bye. <laughs> <laughs> or I'll eat animals raised by my friends. I love making black breads. An easy, wonderful thing we can just make um, in the yard on a fire. Um, we're going to roll out the breads, find some greens from the garden, perhaps some you know spices and herbs, and make little pocket oh, breads. This might have already been making a sweet potato. Oh well. Oh well. Oh well. We're basically looking for I don't know somewhere around a quarter inch. I have to do a checkerboard, but then I, the trick is you have to do it through the middle too, because we have to go into cubes. I'm gonna stir for 20 minutes. It's only exciting for the first one minute. Yeah, um, it's, like, it's like six, really. I'm gonna put in the spoon, just the tip. Just the tip. Um, just the tip. <laughs> the curds will shrink and shrink and shrink. So we're holding this at a constant 86 degrees, so the, right. a combination of the warmth and the agitation is gonna force moisture out of the curd, make a smaller, drier curd, and that's how you get a smaller, drier cheese. So how much shrinkage do you get? <laughs> Depends on how cold it is. Yeah. Coriander seeds, so we just get a nice little, little pot. You just want to toast them like with all like spices. You can generally tell when they're ready to rock out because they obviously just, they will waft. You'll smell that beautiful, and you know it's done. Woo woo woo! Nice. So you can see they kind of settled, and so there's whey on the top. Curds and whey. It's what Little Miss Muffet ate. Oh, okay. See now it'll make sense. I don't know why you'd eat the whey. It's disgusting. Yeah, that is gross. I mean, the pigs like it, but they're pigs. So the whey is the liquid? Right. All feta will use roughly the same process. Some people do press their feta, um, but most people don't. Most people, most feta is gravity. I make a round and I turn my round into squares and they look like butts and it's okay. A lot of people um, want it to look perfect and I'm like, but imperfection is what makes it like quote unquote artisan. Yeah. You know, like. I don't even need it to look like the kind that comes from a factory. Hey, you've got some beautiful uh, sweet potato leaves. Very rarely used in the culinary world, but they have a really great kind of weird flavor. Almost kind of nutty in some ways. Very nice, very different. Good mixture of Swiss chard, parsley from the yard, the cilantro. Got goats in these fields, so I can do this. See, just like that. They're gonna have a jolly good old time later today. One for the goats. Woo! One of the biggest problems with the dairy industry is what to do with all the waste. When we're first setting up the dairy, the inspector said, well, what do you plan to do with the solid waste, the whey? And we went, um, a pig? And he was like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's great. But you can use whey uh, as the cooking liquid in like pizza dough. Okay. Yeah, I wonder if I should save some clean for him. You think you want it? Yeah. yeah. And that way we can kind of do like a taste test to see what the difference is in flavor. We're stealing from the pigs. Pig food, is that what you're giving me? Uh huh. Let's give this a go. Just let the yeast do its thing. The yeast is inside there. It's all a bit of a game at this point. But, but she's nice, she's feeling good, she's warm but not hot. That's what we gotta do. Right, like a big joint or a burrito, or whichever you'd like to call it. So the cheese will just literally break down. So we're just gonna chunk it up a little, spread it out. Woo! Coriander seeds, wonderful, gives it a little nice pop when you bite into a little crunch. Allspice, just because I like allspice. Not totally traditional, but it's 
square lemon. Pin it down with one finger, wrap it over with the next. As I say, it's like empanada, Cornish pasty. All right, you can put that on the heat. Whoop ah, I right, see the beautiful golden color. Fantastical. That's what I'm talking about. This is a regular one, just slightly bigger. Way versus non-way. Way versus non-way. Oh, that's way. gorgeous. No way. So yeah, these are from, from Turkey. It's a really old, uh, I think it's gozameli is the word. I'm probably like bastardizing that, but. <laughs> so you get these little old ladies who sit around with them on, there's like a big board on their knees and a rolling pin and they just like do this all day and then just put them on like the back of it, like a pan on the fire. And um, yeah, basically herbs, spices, bit of acid and your lovely cheese. So cheers. Cheers, 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 cheers that. Thank let's dig in. Hey. I'm sorry, I forgot to bring us napkins. It's like God gave you clothes. I know, jeans. The way one's better. So. Did you notice? Mm -hmm. yeah, it's way, the it's way is creamier. way better. It caramelizes better mm. and is crunchier. Mm -hmm. mm. Can we do the shot where we walk like the reservoir dogs? Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> <laughs>